Hey, Nick Smoot here. Uh, I am the founder and CEO of Innovation Collective. And today, um, you're back on my YouTube page channel thing. And I'm gonna talk about Innovation Collective things. Um, it is super bright outside, but I'm sitting out here because I'm tired of being in my office. Uh, and to give a point of reference, it's July 2020, so it's still the pandemic. So most of us are literally in our offices all the time in our houses. Um, but today what I want to talk about is human nature and creativity, innovation, um, and the things I often hear how different every community is. And I'm speaking from somebody who's been in 80 different little communities, over 80 now, in the last seven years of my life, focused solely on the American dream, what happened to it, how do we reactivate it, and how do we call out the greatness inside of every human being so that they can contribute to the economy in a meaningful way, find value and purpose and find joy. Um, that's the goal, right? Um, so that's where I'm speaking from when I talk about this. And when I hear everyone say our community is so different, this community is different. The one thing that always gets me is I believe this, a human is a human is a human. And either we were created that way, like there's certain things that are just common in all of us, or we've evolved that way to like stay alive and not die. It's one of those two things. But there are some serious commonalities between all of us that cause, you know, the hair on the back of our neck to stand up, cause us to feel excited, to feel empowered, to feel um, like we have purpose and we're, we want to wake up and work hard at something. That's pretty much the same for all people, period. That's stop. And so I want to tell some stories about that and how that, I believe, is what's core to the American Dream Factory, this process we put together with Innovation Collective that's unlocking human flourishing. Uh, we often refer to it as eudaimonia or eudeo, which is the idea of like, I'm alive, I'm flourishing, I'm living, my purpose. And here are the stories. I wanna talk about um, a young man, a mid-career person, and a senior citizen. Three stories, I'll make them fast. Story one, um, young man. Young man's name is Alex. Um, he is in one of the Innovation Collective communities and he's at a science fair invention convention. And he decides he wants to invent something that solves a problem. And he's not thinking about the, like, the big global problem. He's thinking about this is a problem at my dad's store, which is in the community. And he wants to solve this problem because it bothered him, right? solve a problem, dad store bothered me, and I'm going to work hard to solve this problem because I think it matters for other people and I wanna help people serve them, fix the problem. So what is it that he comes up with? Well, it's a disabled man who's trying to get into his dad's store and the door, if I recall correctly, keeps slamming on the guy's hands. He's in a wheelchair, not funny, sorry I laughed. But at the same time to think about now, this has been the inspiration for a young man to change the world. Um, it's pretty awesome. So young man solving this problem, real problem in his dad's business, that he cares about. Sets out, puts us into his science fair as an idea. He has an app he's designed the wireframes for. I see it, Innovation Collective kicks into gear and we start to make some introductions. Fast forward, this kid has won so many awards. Just won the Princess Diana like Youth Award, I think. I think it's the Princess Diana Award, which is amazing. Um, he has won awards from AT&T. He has spoken at Web Summit. He has interviewed Tim Cook. He's had meetings at Apple. Um, with people from the MAPS teams, all because of this little idea he's had, which he's now shipped. He's the CEO of a company. The app is out there, and it's called the Ability App. But it's a great story of a young man trying to solve his problem. And I'll tie this in into the next two pieces again. And I'm gonna cap it out with, what does this mean for humanity and for you? Next story, um, young man story, next story. Mid-career guy in his like 20s. And he is thinking about moving because um, there's a better opportunity somewhere else in his mind. His name is Ken. And he had stabbed his hand on something at work, a piece of fiberglass, while he was working on boats. And he had an idea. Why can't you 3D print with fiberglass? So he shows up at one of our events and starts to talk about this. His experience, again, something from his life, something he cares about, and some hard work. And he starts to think about how he could create really cool things, make things with part of his experience. By the way, he stabbed his hand bleeding. Fast forward through this conversation at one of our events, uh, our signature events called Coffee and Concepts. He has worked with all sorts of different universities, professors, filed a bunch of different patents, has invented a whole new industry around 3D printing using fibers, and has re 
we thought for the whole industry of how you can manufacture basically airplanes, airplane wings, buildings, using a process called CF3D. And this kid, Ken, has revolutionized the whole industry based on stabbing his hand on a boat. Hard work, hasn't been perfect for him, it's been, been tough. Um, but he worked with other people and now a beautiful company is born. Jump ahead, I wanna jump ahead again now to the third person, because remember this whole thing is, I'm gonna talk about what I see is common threads in people and I'm gonna button it all up at the end, I promise. And what I've seen, why the American dream sucks right now. Um, well, actually the American dream doesn't suck. The game being played around the American dream sucks. And like how we define the American dream, that's a whole another tangent, sorry. Um, third, third person, Robert, senior citizen. So little kid, mid-career, like 20s, senior citizen. Senior citizen, Robert, shows up at one of our events and shares a problem he has. This one, another coughing concepts actually. And he shares that um, Robert, who is definitely a senior citizen and he is disabled as well, um, shares that his parents are considering getting a divorce who are in their 90s. And it's because they cannot hear each other anymore. They're just yelling at each other because they just, they can't communicate. They're both deaf as a doorpost apparently. And so he's sharing this emotional conversation a feeling of like my parents can't get divorced after being married for so long and they're in their 90s this is stupid we need to help them and so the community kicks into gear he has an idea people start spitballing it next thing you know there's some doctors some investors phds all rallying around robert to you know operational solve your problem and see if we can help other people as well lots of hard work companies still on its early phases but they invent the ability for you to be able to say words in a room and based on your voice, they show up on a screen in different colors that you can pick to match what color you want for your voice so that people across the house can actually see what people are saying in real time. These are three human beings, boop, boop, boop. three different generations, boop, boop, boop. born at three different times, boop, boop, boop. and all of them, don't really know each other. That's the other thing too, I don't think. Maybe they like cross paths at different points. Um, but a human's a human's a human, right? Coming back to that. And so what's happened to the American dream? I wanna button up this whole piece of like humanity piece and then talk about the American dream because today's whole topic is, I don't even know how to, to title it, but it has to do with like, what are the trends we see, the stories we see that are common in people that are lurking inside of what could unlock the American dream again. So. Um, the thing that I've seen is each of those individuals was solving a problem that's personal to them, right? One was door shutting on the young man's, um, you know, a patron in his dad's business. Another one was I stabbed my hand with fiberglass and an idea was thought, well, why couldn't I create with fiberglass? Another one was my parents are about to get divorced. I want to solve these things from real world experiences, real world things that I'm tasting, touching, feeling around, I am emotional about. It is not sitting back and being like, I'd like to be a billionaire. I'm going to ship a, a, a startup company that does this and they have zero experience in. No, it's actually people wanting to solve real problems in their lives that they see that other people have or that they have. Secondarily, it is them deciding that they're gonna do the hard work and they start doing the hard work and it's not just gonna be easy. They ask for help. They have other people who help them in this process introductions are made, people who help like literally support the company. I have been on countless phone calls with all of these people. Um, our team has been there to guide them through introductions, through putting new talent around them. And it takes a full community to build these things. People like to build things also when they're solving problems together and get to work with people that they like. And maybe the last thing, you see they're solving a problem, they're gonna do the hard work, they need other people. I think those are really key things to kind of point out. There's others I'm sure that we could spend time on. But if I'm to stop it at those three, solving a problem, doing the hard work, and asking for help or working with people, you start to look at something that's missing in society. Like why have we stopped trying to solve problems ourselves when we wait for someone else to solve them? Why are we not willing to do the hard work and we're so flipping soft? And why don't we ask for help? Maybe it's because we're not working on anything meaningful. 
that's difficult anymore and we just consume. That's a whole nother piece that we could talk about for the American dream. But when you look at these three individuals who are ridiculously happy, by the way, in their journey, not all the time, it's not like, oh, everything's perfect, it's hard, but they are happier because as people, we were either designed or have evolved into things that we are happier when we're doing difficult things, working to solve real problems and to help other people to ship something of value and beauty in the world. When I look at the state of the American dream and what's going on globally, remove the COVID, you know, it's a conspiracy, it's not a conspiracy. It's gonna kill me, it's not gonna kill me. Remove the George Floyd, it's systematic racism, it's not systematic racism. We have problems in this world, period. But the one thing that you can control is waking up you and starting to manage this thing again in a way that you start to try and solve real problems that are in your world, that you're willing to do the hard work and you're gonna ask for help. And if you don't have a community of people to help you do that, go to innovationcollective.co right now and go sign up on our mailing list to be a part of either our digital community or one of our physical communities where we gather together to address these things. I wanted to talk about the multi-generations because everyone says, well, that's the greatest generation. This generation's garbage. Um, these people suck. These ones will change the world. These ones will change the world. Guess what? We're all garbage and we're all magic. Hard stop. So be more magic, be less garbage. Welcome to what we're building with Innovation Collective. Hope you can be a part of it. Um, coming soon, we'll be releasing early kind of smatterings of our software suite, which we've been testing. And it's all the different pieces of what we build in these communities. We call it Udeo. Um, I'm excited about what we do, if you can't tell. And I hope that you choose to be awesome, make things, solve problems, and add value to the world, not take value from the world because that's kind of how we get into a really sad state. Uh, I'm going to go now. I'm going to turn this off. And I'll see you again next Friday. Oh, click the bell button. I think I think there's a bell button. Subscribe. Roman, you got to help me out here. Roman's my intern that he makes me do these videos. And he's a slave driver. Roman beats me. He's, you know, a, a teenager. And look at it. If you see a kid named Roman who's a teenager, be careful. Actually, he's the best. Um, he's doing a great job. I'm having fun with Roman helping. And... Um, hit the bell subscribe share it thumbs it up thumbs it down if you hate it like it's cool um you know put it on live television i, I don't know throw it on your, your your twitch i think that's a word um you it would seem like i have no idea what i'm doing by the way and like i've never touched tech i have built three tech companies um was the first my one of my companies with my partners we were the first ever put the whole body of psychology on the internet and digitize it like i know the tech but now when things are happening, by the way, like new websites and like uh, apps, I'm still confused. And I'm garbage at video games, like garbage, garbage. Mario Kart, I will kick your ass. Like old Mario Kart, by the way, with less buttons and less like it looks real, because that's a whole nother thing. Um, I will, I'll kick your ass at real Mario Kart, like in the real world, I will compete with you all day long. I'm gonna go kart with a video game that looks real with too many buttons, I'm garbage. I'm the guy in like Call of Duty who's in the corner with a knife out because I think you get weapons now. It's not like you use your tongue like a, a, a toad from whatever that battle toads. That was weird. For those who don't know, it's okay. I'm just dating myself. It sounds weird all on its own. I'm aging myself? I don't know. I guess I'm dating myself too. Um, I'm kind of rambling now, but... Uh, yeah, new websites are too hard for me. I'm the guy in the game who's in the corner with a knife like trying to stab a wall because I don't know what I'm doing. I have zero clue. Just garbage at it. So all that to say, I think what I was trying to say is share this on your TikTokers with your Twitches, send up some smoke signals, and let people know that Innovation Collective, Nick Smoot, has a YouTube like thing, a YouTube thing. 